Oh, oh, goodness. I'm like, I've been battling this little cold that my kids brought home from preschool. But regardless, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the Brandon Coin YouTube channel. And this is a, another episode of the solar setup farm build out. Um, I need to get these batteries inside of my garage so that the way they're in a temperature controlled in, environment because leaving them outside will absolutely nuke them because it's getting so cold. Uh, and then I have ordered a battery testing device. So I'll be able to test uh, individually each one of these batteries and to see if they not only are worth using, um, but how much capacity I'll be able to uh, extract and actually utilize um, out of these. So on paper, it's quite a bit, but you know how things go for like paper calculations. Anyways, uh, it's time to lift some weight because there's quite a few batteries and they're quite a bit heavy. So let's pull over to the garage and get them unloaded. All right, guys, so um, I don't know if you saw in that last clip or not, but I unloaded all the batteries. I brought them inside. Um, had a bunch of people already tell me that I cannot store batteries on concrete. Um, I did some Googling, and apparently it's not good to operate batteries on concrete, but for storing them for short periods of time, it is okay. So I will not be operating them in here. I just brought them in here uh, because I have better temperature control in my garage. I do run a couple miners in here. I don't normally have the door open at night, so um, they're at least in a better environment. I am going to be testing them all uh, to make sure they are still decent. Um, I did heed your guys' warnings about them blowing up. Don't worry, I'm not going to be running any of these batteries inside of my living structure. So that's where I wanted to walk over here and show you guys where I plan on putting the solar array. And that is up here so i have this big cleared area it's a little grown over with some weeds so i do need to knock those down but this is where um me and my wife had cleared a spot and we planned on building a house later on but in the meantime uh we're probably not going to be building for i don't know three four five years something like that it's just we had the property we were already knocking trees down so we decided to uh go ahead and clear this spot so this is, you know, there are some trees over here, but the sun does come up right here and run straight over and then down. So we, we do lose a little bit of uh, sunlight for the, with these trees. But other than that, we're pretty, pretty solid. And we got a, a pretty good area of, uh, of sunlight exposure. Now, this is North Carolina. I know it's not like some places where they get gobs of sunlight, I think googling it the average year round is somewhere around like five five to six hours obviously less in the winter and more in the summer but um i'm thinking i'll probably put a small building um somewhere right in this area and i want to build everything so that way i can move it later on so i'll probably build this small building on you know some kind of like four by four sleds so that way it can be drug around and I'm thinking somewhere in the range of maybe like, you know, six foot by six foot wide and just tall enough to walk in. I'm not going to be putting any solar panels on top of the building. I guess I could, but um, I'm going to be building an array that's going to go on a wooden rack that'll probably be somewhere over in this area. And that's where the solar panels are going to sit. But before I do any of that, we definitely still need to knock all these weeds down. Um, I talked to my dad, he's got a bush hog. So we'll come up here, bush hog that. And realistically, so I have 20 panels and they are right at five foot tall and about two foot wide roughly. So if I did an array of say 10 panels wide, that would be 20 feet wide. Let me, let me roughly w walk this off. I've worked in construction most of my life. I figure I can, I've walked off many job sites. So Nice. 20 feet from the middle of that path 
which I don't know if you guys can see it, to about right here. Um, yeah, I got plenty of room, plenty of room. So that means realistically this open swath here is probably 20, 40, somewhere in the range of 60 feet before the wood line from the middle of this path and then easily um, 60 feet to that first tree. And then the wood line really doesn't start until like another 10 foot behind that, that first tree right there. So um, this section right here is, we'll say at least 120 feet wide. So I could do a little building that would house some batteries, uh, the inverter, and then the miners. And then I could set up the first solar array, which would be the uh, 10 wide and two tall. So it would hold those first 20 panels and we would set them at an angle so they wouldn't be sitting five foot, 10 foot high. They'd be somewhere in the range of like probably four foot, eight foot to the top of them. Um, I wanna build that on a wooden structure. I'll, I'll get inside and, and show you. I've done some basic, you know, Microsoft Paint sketch work to try to figure out um, my dimensions and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much the basic idea. now. I know a lot of people said these panels are older. They will have some degradation. They're not going to perform very well, but I can't beat them for the price that I paid. It was uh, it was one of those come and get it situations. And so I came and got it. And uh, yeah, now we're going to harness the power of the sun and mine a little bit. Um, also, that inverter, I talked to some people, that inverter is not going to work for my setup. Um, so I am going to be getting a 240 volt. I think I'm going to go for the Vivor inverters. Some people said that they had issues with them getting hot but i watched ed's diy solar he did a breakdown and that thing was absolutely doing doing some business so uh with a little bit of maybe an extra fan for cooling on that bad boy i think we won't have any problems uh running that vivor and if we do you know worst case scenario um this is all going to be a cleared knockdown section once we are set up for mining uh it won't be in my living space so we shouldn't shouldn't have any issues and then um, some people also told me that they make these, there's basically like an explosive, uh, um, uh, fire device. So you can set it inside of a location and if a fire breaks out, it'll explode and, and put, um, like the, uh, whatever it is that, that foam all over everything might, you know, might want to shield the miners from that, but at least we could, you know, potentially save ourselves from any kind of fire. But I don't think we'll be doing that cause I don't, I don't want to try to push the limits, we're trying to low and slow and uh, and build out, you know, maybe one array at a time. So 20 panels at a time. And I basically just want to replicate it. So if I do an array up there, which it'll be that 20 feet wide and it'll end up being, you know, uh, about eight feet tall, say nine feet tall. And then the depth on it will be probably around 10 feet, give or take. Um, and then, you know, I could offset that maybe 20 feet and do another array of 20 panels and then offset that and another array of 20 panels because my length here is ridiculous. I have, oh, my, my shoe came off. I have somewhere in the range of probably, you know, 400 feet of cleared area in this, in this swath right here and, you know, array, array, array. Obviously. I'm all, all, you know, I'm new to this, so I'm definitely figuring best case scenario. I'm hoping that first array of predominantly 175 watt with some 190 watt mixed panels will be able to run one miner, at least when we have full sunlight. Um, and then I will be stepping up. I found a, uh, a distributor that has used panels up in Virginia, and we will be stepping up into higher capacity panels. So we'll be able to run hopefully uh, two, two miners Per array is the uh, is the dream. So, yeah, it's basically where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. And um, for the people that told me to put solar panels on my roof, everybody that I've talked to that's been in the business of like solar and use solar, they say if you got room to do a ground mount, absolutely do a ground mount. Easier maintenance, um, easier setup, simpler setup. And then if we need to change anything down the line it's it's just way way easier so that's where we're at um we do have some family stuff coming on tomorrow so i don't know if i'm gonna get this knocked down tomorrow or not but i'm, I'm uh if i can't get his bush hog i'll probably be out here with the weed whacker so not looking forward to that but uh yeah hope everybody's having a good one and um i'm, I'm excited 
I am, I am stoked. I actually need to probably go get some more wire. Still got the panels over there on the trailer. What's my dog doing? What you doing, dog? But yeah, so anyway, it's cold. It's very cold. So I'm gonna get myself inside and I will see you guys on the flip side. Also, also about the batteries, because a lot of people are like really worried about these lead acid batteries. Um, I'm going to use these for now, but I know I'm not going to be able to drain them down and cycle them very hard. They don't have a lot of life, uh, for heavy cycles. So I'm only going to be using them as a buffer in between clouds and stuff like that cloud cover. And I'll have them, the turn off or voltage off to the inverter, um, at a, uh, a fairly high limit. I'm not going to draw them down real hard. And if they still just don't work well for my application, then I will, I know I'll eventually have to invest into some, um, some lithium batteries so it's just i'm not trying to run these things all night because if i include the price of lithium batteries to run in an ant miner 24 7 we would never roi ever so anyway guys thanks for coming out i really appreciate it and i will see you guys on the flip side adios for real this time the video is over